You guys ever have one of those days when you, you get a piece of equipment and you don't really know what it does and probably doesn't even matter because you still got to fix it, right? Today's that day. Never seen this item before. Probably never will. Again, who's to say? We're going to tear right into it. See what we can find. Customer says it's got a leak. And uh, to be honest, I don't even really know what this device does. Don't even know what to call it. So today, unknown troubleshooting. Coming up next, right here on Better Biomed. All right, everyone, here we go. This is a Roylan Strava. I guess that's what it's called. This is model 100.500. Never seen it before. I believe it's a physical therapy item that's used for casts. It, it's, uh, it looks like a heater cooler or a heater for thermal packs. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe it is a uh, thermal pack heater. No real idea. But what I do know is that it supposedly has a leak. And uh, that's usually not a good thing. So. Anyway, uh, the item comes with a stainless steel plate, which hides the fantastic heating element right here, front and center. There seems to be a drain port or maybe a recirculation port. I'm almost thinking it recirculates because down here, there's an induction screen, which means usually the water's going this way and it would have to come out someplace, right? That's what it looks like. Uh, so, uh, it looks like this is a sealed basin. So if there's a leak, it's probably in the tubing. If it is a recirculating unit again, I've never taken this thing apart. I have no clue how it functions. I could be dead wrong about all of this, but I do know it's got an interactive screen right here. It probably tells the temperature and, uh, probably the status. And I don't see any physical switches other than the power switch. So either it's always on or this is a touch screen and allows you to activate a cycle. Again, I don't know. Um, also down here, you see this little doohickey hanging out. I believe this is probably a temperature monitor or a thermostat. Probably the readout for this guy here. I'm pretty certain about that. But uh, so I took the panel out. You can see this guy right here because we don't want it flopping around. This does appear to be tempered glass, which means we don't want things hitting it because when tempered glass breaks, it breaks bad. It, it's it's pre-stressed glass, so it will explode in a very violent fashion. So I, I do have a power cord, which has uh, this famous IEC, so do not lose this cord, uh, which normally is a 20 amp, hmm. but it's got a 15 amp at the other side, 120 volt. So I'm going to go ahead and stick this guy off to the side hill. And what we're going to do is I'm going to have to flip this guy upside down eventually. So looking at the side right here, uh, you can see that it has a drain port. And also over here is your IEC and uh, your master on off switch. It does have a little access port right here, which makes me curious. It's got a large bottom panel. I'm thinking that what I should do is loosen up the main fasteners and take the hood off. And this all would be the hood it just pulls off from the top. And that should give me pretty clear access, right? No, it doesn't. Ah, why? Okay. This one's not going to be as simple as I thought it was. Simplest thing would be to take this end cover off right here. I guess that's probably where I should start. Now, one of the things I do want to do is I, this is just a wooden panel and I don't want to mar up this guy. And remember, it's got glass. So I want to be careful and to be careful. Remember these guys, I did a video on these guys from uh, Harbor Freight, the US General. Well, this is a perfect case for it, either to drain the fluids, which I can set it up here and drain it into the pan, or uh, to invert it on the glass. The reason I can't just invert it on the glass, not only because it might get scratched up and maybe dinged, but also because it's got the handle and I don't want to detach the handle. In order to make it lay flush and not stress the glass, we have to lay it on something. 
So that's what we're going to do right now. Um, now this guy right here is suspect automatically. It's got uh, little Allens. So let's go ahead and uh, addition to my Allen driver set. Let's see if I can just pull this guy off. Now I, I want to start with this little cover right here because yeah, it's the kiss principle, right? Keep it simple. And I'm going to go ahead and throw my fasteners up in this jolly blue pan. Now, if I can see the leak from under this cover, oh, easy repair, got to love easy repairs. But for whatever reason, I have a feeling that uh, this one might have you know, a problem with one of the tubes up and in here. I can kind of see some hose clamps and some hoses and uh, who knows what's going on. Again, guys, I have never opened this guy up before. And uh, for all you guys that say, whoa, you got to be trained on stuff. Yeah, right. Say that to the rest of the biomed world. Um, that is not always the case. All right. So underneath the main cover, it appears I have a filter, a filter of some sort, right? And let's see, I'm checking for stress cracks because these 90 degree uh, nylon elbows are infamous for cracking and leaking. So I'm just gently pulling on them to see if that's the problem. Now this lid right here was very loose, okay? That was extremely loose. It was so loose that I'm not comfortable. And also, uh, so yeah, that is a filter screen. And this filter screen is kind of clean. Not too bad. So um, one of the things I'm noticing right off the bat is that this fitting right here is a little bit too loose. I'm not comfortable with that. Um, because if this is circulating fluids, that means that that guy right there is going to be uh, possibly leaking. So I'm going to go ahead and put some Teflon on these two before I put it back together. Um, and let's see, what else do I have in here? So this guy right here looks like the circulating pump from what I can see. And let's see, I see the drain. Okay. So the fluid comes in on this side, it comes up. You can see, uh, it comes through, right? One. It's a little too tall for me to see. Yeah, so I think uh, it comes up through and down that way where it's going to meet up with the pump. Hmm. Okay, well, this guy's definitely got to uh, be shown some love. But, ah, uh, man. I don't think that that is my only problem. Okay. We're going to invert it. So, let's see. There's the handle. Let's, let's get the filter screen. Man, I do like these little blue holders. I absolutely do. Um, okay, let's go ahead and flip this guy over so it gives me the most purchase I can. And, oh, let's see all the fluids leak everywhere, right? Perfect. Look at that. So it's sitting over here supported on the glass by that large uh, silicone mat. Perfect. Love it when a plan comes together. Any of you kids from the 80s, you know exactly where that saying comes from. And since I've never ever taken one of these apart, I'm not using any power tools because you never know what's going to happen. So what I should be able to do is just loosen all these fasteners and take this back cover off. I was thinking that the white part was going to lift off. It's not. The black part lifts off. And that is because the white part is fully molded to the reservoir. And since it's fully molded, that means that your thermostat and the induction screen and the heating element, that's all, it's all part of it. So one of the things I don't know is if these fasteners are different lengths. So I am going to be using these trays appropriately to separate them out. Some of these might be shallow, really shallow, like these ones. Meh. I've seen this fastener right here was a little bit at an angle. That does not make me feel good. And also, I went from um, studs, plastic screws. So I'm going to put the plastic screws up here, separate those out. That's why it was at an angle, is because, you know, it, it cuts its own threads. Yep, there we are. Okay, so I'm good at this end. Hopefully this just lifts off and I can keep these fasteners in their holes. 
Well, this thing so far is, it appears to be easy to maintain. You know, it's not too complex. And let's see, is that it? Okay, these ones here are looking good. All right, so I have a little, little door over here. All right, let's see. Do they have a hidden fastener on me? Nope. All right. Yes! I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay. So I do have some water sitting up here, which is very far away from the lid that I opened up. So that means that my leak is probably over here someplace. I'm betting it. All right. So I have um, pressure tubing. And then I have, is that silicone tubing or just PVC? 3 8 inner diameter uh, PVC. And uh, we have some what, uh, half inch and 3 8 silicone pressure tubing. Pressure tubing's got the inner weave so that it can handle uh, some degree, that's quarter, quarter inch. Uh, let's see, what is this? This looks like a UV filter? Okay, so that would, I, I thought that was a pump. Here's the pump. That looks like it's a UV filter, and that's, that's why also why it's reflective, because the UV that's in there, it can reflect all over the place and bounce back and forth and kill more bacteria. Uh, I do see some real problems, though. So this connector right here was done horribly, and I would assume that this is done from the factory. And I have to show that because this is an electrical hazard. So right here is the part in question. Now this is not a leak. So this isn't um, anything to do with the initial complaint. But if you guys can see right here, I have exposed conductors all the way around on this connector. Right, let's see if I can get you even closer. You see one side is okay, it's reasonable. And take a look at this other side. You can see I have exposed conductors on every single pin, and it looks like some of them are barely even touching. That's horrible. Ah. So the frustrating part is that that is completely preventable. And one of the reasons that you can prevent it is because we can put crimp pins on there, and those crimp pins keep all those conductors together. And I have an entire kit, I've done videos on that. And I think I should go and get that because I don't even want to turn this guy on. Uh, some of those conductors are almost touching other conductors. Why would they do that? Okay, uh, we have to fix that. Okay, guys. Well, um, man, sometimes you just get a little disappointed. And uh, that is me on this device right now. You know, everybody holds OEMs up to such a, an esteem. And then we see stuff like that. Now. I was facing this way and I, all I seen was the top of this and I assumed that this was going to be a low voltage power supply. Hmm. Boy, was I wrong. This is actually a connector that goes to the UV light. So it's a ballast. This is a high voltage power supply and uh, the wires are tinned on this side, but hmm, take a look right here. The wires are not tinned all the way on this side. What they should have done is tinned it all the way up to the insulation and then chopped the wire back. But what they did is they still only tinned it almost like maybe they dipped it in, uh, you know, something. Um, and then I have an equal amount that's untinned and uninsulated. And that was the amount of wire that was sticking back. Now I could put heat shrink tube on it and that would solve this problem. In fact, um, Maybe that would be the best solution. I think that's what we're going to do. I think we're going to put some heat shrink tube on it. And um, because it is tinned, it's just we have to give it some support. And the insulation should go all the way up to the terminal where it screws down. So that's going to be the next thing. I'm going to go ahead and um, wire for wire, put heat shrink tube on it, and then make sure that it's secured. So we're going to do that next. It's right here is the connector that I'm complaining about. And this is exactly how it was when I found it. You can see these ones here are tinned. That's okay, it's not the best. 
These ones over here are just willy-nilly. They're almost touching. You see that? It's almost touching. That's horrible. See that? They're either going to break off or they're going to touch and it's an electrical hazard. I don't even know. That's probably low voltage, but still, it's coming out of your regulated DC power supply right here. That's reckless. Okay, we're going to fix that. Okay, guys. So since it's tinned already, um, all that we really have to do is go through, just put some heat shrink tube on it and re-secure it. And this is one of the reasons why I absolutely love having this Milwaukee. This guy right here is an absolute beast for in the field. Man, it has saved my bacon so many times. Here I was thinking I was going to put some ferro rules on it, which would work and would work maybe even a little better than tinning the wires. But uh, in this case, we're just going to go ahead, cut these in half. And so I don't mess up the wiring, uh, you know, the order. I'm going to do it like this. So, you know, we do one, then the next, then the next. <laughs> I'm using dual layer uh, marine grade heat shrink tube. It's extra thick. It's got an inner layer that has adhesive. So when you heat it up, it uh, sticks to the wire better and it, it makes for a stronger joint. This is exactly what we want right here. Here we go. So when the adhesive comes out of the heat shrink tube at the ends, that's when you know it's done pretty well. Yeah, wow. Definitely hot. And these are push style releases. So I'm gonna push this guy in. There we go. And push this guy in. There we go. Okay, that's a much better joint. So now we're gonna go through the other ones and do those all up one by one till we're done. Okay, so I reoriented it so that you guys can see. Um, I redid the connection right here. So it's got heat shrink tube, I secured it. It's a, it's a horrible connection. We've got plenty of real estate in here to use a better connector. I have no idea why they went with this type of connector. That is not what I would use for uh, voltage to a lamp. But it is what it is, all right? That's the OEM. Um, I, I really don't get it. Um, so, hmm, I see a pair of, of shears. They're lost and up inside the device. So anyway, uh, I got those wires secured and it looks good. I'll throw an image up so that you guys can see what it looks like. And that takes me back to the leak, the original problem. So over here, this is the drain tube. And one of the things I do notice is over here, I see some bubbles moving when I squeeze the tube. And that tells me automatically that there's definitely something going on there. So I'm going to loosen this connector up. All the other hose clamps are inverted for service. This one here is facing the wrong direction. Which I don't understand that. And uh, what I have to do is I have to loosen up this hose clamp and rotate it and then see if that is where my leak is coming from. It's suspicious. There we go. Guys, if you're ever putting hose clamps in a device, especially a medical device, make sure that uh, they're all pointing in the direction of service, which means if there's a little access panel or something, and that's the way that you have to like loosen them up in order to pull the panel off. Make sure that it's turned that way. You know, even though like I have the bottom off, like if there was something that I had to remove, the hose clamp should be rotated so that they're easily serviceable. This one here was inverted. I have no idea how they got that guy tightened down. Again, that's probably an OEM thing because there's no real way of tightening it down upside down like that. That's, that's weird. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this tube off and it's going to spill some liquid. All right. All right. There we go. And I'm checking it to see if there's any holes in it. And now that the hose clamp is facing me, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and re-secure it and test it again. Yeah. How about that? 
That looks better. Okay, so we got that. Now one of the things I did notice is that there's water that's collecting down here by the pump. And it's, it's a curious situation because the pump has also got this pad which holds it off the ground. And that means that that would be a common collection point for the water. So I can't assume that that is where the leak is starting from. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move these hoses around and I'm going to check and make sure that none of these fittings are loose. They all have a type of schmoo on them, which is definitely keeping them secure. I don't sense any holes. The weakest tubing in here is the one that goes over here to the drain port. That looks way better now. And also I'm checking around the basin right here. This is the heating element. And then we have the thermostat along with the um, induction tube. And this guy, this, this clamp right here is also not good um, because it's on the very end of the barb. I have no idea why they would do that. So hose clamp should be halfway down the barb, not at the very end. <laughs> if it's at the end, you have a potential for cutting the hose. You know, because if the hose flexes right there and uh, it's putting extra stress on uh, the hose. And this, this hose is also, also at a very bad angle. Very bad angle. I don't think it's creating a leak, but what it's doing is it's creating stress right here on the end of this barb. You see it? How it's pulling the hose at that odd angle? That's not good. If I had extra uh, tubing, I would definitely uh, replace that guy, make it maybe a little bit longer. All right, so here we go, just securing this guy. So, so far, the only thing I've found that could possibly cause the leak is these uh, nylon fittings that are over here on this side. The ones I initially noted when I, yeah, see right there. That, that's, that's rotating on those fittings. That is not supposed to happen. So these all look good. I'm not seeing any leaks around the lamp. Uh, I don't sense any moisture there. The motor. Uh, I don't see any cracks in the housing. So because this has got a composite, since the motor has a composite, um, what is it, impeller hood? that that would be a suspect place for uh for cracks and i'm not seeing it so i think what happened is the water was leaking from probably over here and because it's got this pad here the water collected here on the motor and it's foam so it, it does kind of hold it um i think the electronics are are safe i'm looking at them i don't see any evidence of moisture getting to them so i think the moisture was sticking right here and it's probably leaking out down here at this bottom seam. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and re-secure this guy right here. And uh, then we're going to go ahead and check it out. So probably the best way to do this would be to secure this guy by removing these hoses. So right here off the motor and right here. Loose these up and then uh, replace this guy as an assembly. Because other words... I don't know if that's going to work out so well. Okay, that's what we're going to do. We're going to pull these two hoses. Means I also got to cut the zip tie. And uh, we're going to go ahead and pull that assembly and take a look. Since that's the filter and it's technically a service point, things usually break where the user interfaces with them, or in this case, the technician. That's okay. So let's go ahead and cut the zip tie first. You got this guy. And let's see. Wow, they, they use really nice tubing in this guy. Really nice tubing. Okay, so there's this one. Ooh. Again, they're placing the hose clamps at the very end of the tubing. So the barb is really long on the motor ho housing. And they had the clamp right here at the very end of the hose. That is not how hoses are supposed to be clamped. Hoses should mushroom on both sides of the clamp. And what they were doing is just capturing the very end of the hose. And what this will do is it'll allow water to creep up the hose around the barb until it meets the clamp, which can create some contamination issues. You really don't want water going up the barb as far as possible. 
because that where the hose sits on the barb, the the longer that distance, the more likely it is for fluid to get trapped there, and it gets it gets bad. So uh, that's not cool. That's definitely not cool. This guy right here, it almost seems like the hose wasn't shoved all the way on the barb either. That's okay. We're going to press forward. So the one fitting that I had a problem with because uh, it was at an odd angle, we're going to go ahead and pull that hose. So I'm using a, a flat flathead screwdriver. Kind of give my, because silicone tubing, it doesn't want to let go of a barb very well. So you just kind of preload the hose by putting a little bit of pressure on the on the end of the hose and it will usually just come off. I also have the heat gun and the heat gun is fantastic for this stuff as well. Come on. Oh wow. You know, the larger the diameter of the silicone hose, the harder it is to get off of fittings, man. I guess I shouldn't be complaining about that cuz that means that that's better for us, right? Okay. There we go. I'm trying not to damage the hose or the barb. Because remember, this barb is composite. Okay. So the motor looks like it's good. It's looking fantastic. Here's that silicone. It's a double layer silicone tube. I guess it kind of has to be because it's also... Um, it's also got the braiding, right? All right, so, and this one here is a brass fitting. It's silicone tube. It's also got this really goofy zip tie on there. I have no idea why it's got a zip tie on it. This seems like a very lazy way of doing a strain relief. Gosh, sharp. There we go. Okay. So here we go. Pulling it out. There's the clamp. Here's the clamp. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put these clamps off to the side. So here's the problem. Do you see that? All right, that's not good. That's never good. So first things first, we gotta secure these fittings. There is a schmoo on the threads, but these are uh, nylon components and I doubt that very much sticks to them, as you can see. So it looks like they used a silicone, and they put it in with a silicone, but they really didn't put very much silicone on it. Okay. That's all right. I'm going to go get some silicone. Oh, look at this. It's coming right off. I'm going to go get some silicone, and we're going to redo it. Probably, hopefully, do it better. Okay guys, so I have GE Tub and Tile Silicone. This is a, uh, what, 10 or 15 year? Uh, seven year, mold free. So um, it does have some anti-mold um, inhibitors in there. So anyway, what we're gonna do is we are going to apply that to the fitting and it looks very similar to the silicone that they had on there. I think I just might use maybe a little bit more than they did. And I'm going to make sure I get all the threads, not just the entry level threads, which is what I kind of have a feeling that they did. And let's go ahead and fix that around. All right. And I'm also going to put it on the inside right here. So the goal is to make sure that there's plenty of silicone on these threads that this does not happen again. Now you have to remember this is a heating unit so it does have thermal expansion that is also contending with. So you figure you expand and contract something enough times it's going to eventually wear out which definitely includes even silicone. Alright so let's do this. There we go. That's a good fit. Make sure that they're perfect. Wow, both sides, super loose. The other side was a little bit looser than this one, but uh, that's all right. If you're gonna do it to one side, you're gonna do it to the other. Now, here's the thing. If you guys have this device in your inventory, I bet 
that this is happening to yours as well, especially if you service it regularly. I bet you, if it happens to one, it happens to more, right? That's, that's one of my rules of repair, and this is no exception, guys. So this part here, just because of the materials it's made out of, the fact that it's kind of flopping in the breeze, it's going to suffer from movement, and that is why we have problems like this. But that's okay, it's an easy fix. All right. So there's the housing. So what I'm doing is I'm making sure that I'm smearing the silicone down into the threads. It's not just balled up in one spot. It's all over that bad boy. And it's down into the threads. See that? So when I screw it on there, each and every one of those threads is going to help seal it. Excellent. Make sure it's got the right angle. Okay, so here's where we're gonna have to stop because silicone has a 24 hour cure. So we're gonna come back tomorrow, finish assembling this piece right here, and we're gonna put some water in it and run it. Let's we'll see if it leaks. I'll see you guys tomorrow. All right, guys, welcome back again. It's been a few days, mm. and I do love me some coffee. So guys, when we left off, I put brand new silicone, and this is tub and tile silicone, which means it has some additives which prevent things like mold from building up, um, and it can be used immediately with, with liquids like water. So I, this guy here has been done up. I'm testing it out. It's cured, we're ready to go. So now we've got to put it back in. Got the two original hose clamps. They're here standing by. I do believe from what I can tell, this is the original problem. So since this was the original problem, we're gonna treat it like that, put it back in, and then see if we still have a leak. If we still have a leak, then Maybe there's some wear someplace on one of the other components, but I don't really see it. So let's just go with that, right? Anyway, let's go ahead and put all this tube back on. So this is extra crazy tubing because it's double layer silicone with the embedded um, pressure web, I guess you could say. Wow, that's crazy. And um, up here, there was also a zip tie. Now, I didn't put the zip tie in. I have no clue why it was there. But the zip tie, I guess, is the position, uh, the strainer or the filter over to the side. No idea. All I can assume is that it's OEM factory because there's no evidence that it's anything else. So we're going to treat it like it's OEM. All right, so the clamps. I'm going to put both the clamps on before we put the tubing on. Make sure that these barbs are clean. Nice. There we go. Excellent. We're back on. Now all we gotta do is secure the clamps and continue on. All right. Hmm. <sighs> gotta get that motivation up this morning. Okay. So the clamps need to be positioned so that they can be readily accessed from the bottom. And that was some of my original problem is that the clamps weren't positioned correctly down the barbs. Some of the clamps were down at the end of the barbs. And um, some of them were down at the very beginning of the barb. They should be right in the middle. So the reason you don't want them all the way down at the beginning of the barb, down at the base, is because that allows a lot of area where the water can get down the hose and around the barb, which allows things like a long-term infection to set in. Because when you get that growth, it's really hard to get it out without removing that tube, scrubbing with bleach, and then starting again. So I put my hose clamps about halfway to two-thirds down the barb. So if this is the barb, my hose clamp is going to go right here. So not here, not down here, 
right here. So it's got just enough room to flex, but at the same time, you don't have the ability for fluid to come up the barb and, uh, you know, really give you some long-term problems. It's kind of annoying that hose clamps still use flathead, flat blade. You would think that more of them would use uh, Phillips configuration or square drive or something, right? Okay, here we go. This one, this one's the more critical one to position because it's on the pump. So the other thing that I'm noticing about these hose clamps is because they're extra uh, skinny, they want to kind of cant when they go in and when you tighten it down, which would mean that you would have the upper edge and the lower edge would be kind of pressing in harder on the hose. So you want to make sure that that hose clamp is nice and flat when you start squeezing it down. Because if it's, if it's canted, you start squeezing down, you're getting some rough edges down on your silicone tubing. And that could lead to some immediate wear and tear. Not good. Okay. That one's secure. Checking the hose for any damages. We're good. That's looking beautiful. Okay, so the wiring harness over here is the one that I repaired. Those are looking fantastic. They go to the ultraviolet bulb in here, which is a compact fluorescent, I believe since it has a ballast and all the other terminations look like they're really good. Over here is a single solenoid and the single solenoid, it, uh, it regulates the circulation basically. Um, I would say, yep, it, it controls the flow in and out of the UV lamp. Hmm. Okay, interesting enough, comes in. I wonder if that controls the drain. Because it looks like the path comes through this solenoid and then it would activate and allow pass through to the drain. Hmm, it's either that or just the opposite. When, it, when you turn the system on, it goes live and it disables the drain one or the other but um and one of the other interesting things here there's this little wire right here that's soldered to the board comes all the way up here to the front where you can see they have a little coin cell over here by this access panel by the filter which is kind of cool because that means that you can come over here and you can change out your your uh, coin cell battery without having to remove the bottom cover they really thought that through. And over here is a USB for serviceability. So you can plug in probably a laptop or a service tool key, and you can access maybe some extra menus or something. Very neat stuff. Let's see, what else do we have? So I've got two uh, little drivers down here, and it looks like. They are heat synced to that, that item that I said looked like a temperature module, temperature monitor. I don't know. Kind of curious. I wish I had a service manual for this. I could look it up and see what's going on. Okay, one more time to check some of these fittings before I leave. I'll put this guy back together. Yeah, that's all looking good. Okay. So at this moment, we are ready to go ahead and put the bottom pan on. And that way there we can flip it back over and give it a leak check. So I'm gonna give it a leak check with the side panel off so I can also look in to whatever degree I can. Um, but unfortunately, I can't run it with it inverted like this, so I need the bottom pan. So let's get that on right now. Okay, everything's ready. We're tight. Things are looking good. Let's go ahead and dump in, eh, let's say, two gallons. Okay. And got water coming down here. So far, no apparent leaks. It's looking good. Okay. 
One of the features on this guy I think it's interesting is it's got this uh, little bump stop right here. And this glass hood is designed so that well, as you go down flat, it can sit up at an angle like this so you can use the device. Very interesting. Never seen anything like it before. Okay, so let's do the IEC. Okay, we've got power and all right, it's booting. Very cool. So you guys can see the boot screen, what it looks like. It is a touch screen. Very cool. It says 79 degrees Fahrenheit, set at 155. It does have a time and date. Is it interesting? So it's clicking on and off, and I assume what is clicking on and off is going to be your heating element. That's what I assume. So far, no circulation. I wonder if it's not going to circulate until, um, until it gets up to temperature. That would be interesting because circulating circulating would cool it down for sure um i guess we'll just find out so let's uh go ahead and let it run for a little bit so it can heat up we're at 79 degrees i've got quite a bit of steam happening in the chamber all right i'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit more water There we go. Now, if you guys are curious about why I'm just using tap water, it's because it could be leaking all over the place. Expense wise, at this point, I'm just gonna use this for checking the temperature and circulating it, but I'm also gonna clean it after we're done with the regular tap. And that's why I also have the bleach down there is because I'm going to run a bleach cycle and if there is any growth or anything in here currently, I, I have no idea how long this has been in storage or how long it's been down, but uh, I always like to clean my devices before I ship them out. So after we verify the temperature, then I'll go ahead and run a bleach cycle and a rinse, and then uh, we'll go ahead and ship it at that time. But all right, we're at 80 degrees, and um, I'll let you guys know as soon as it gets up temperature. All right, everyone. It took me probably about 30 minutes to get it up and going, but uh, here we are. So there, there's a couple of things to note is that I am not detecting any leak at the moment, but, but what I have noticed, it takes about 30 minutes or so for it to heat up. And uh, there's a lot of condensate here, which normally isn't a problem because as you open it up, look how it kind of collects. Check this out. So not only is some vapor collecting down here by the hinge, but this little plate, because it's mounted flat, you can see as I open it up, the water drips down and it collects right here on this lip. Very messy. You know, if they would have just molded in just a couple degrees worth of angle right here for this guard strip, as the water collected, it would have then dripped back into the chamber, but they, they molded it flat. Right, yeah, it looks flat. And so you can see the water's pooling here along the edge and also the vapor as it condensates, it's collecting here. What a messy design um, because if anything, that's something that people are going to have to deal with is that there's always going to be, you know, hot water here. As it reached its temperature, down here there gets to be a little play that pops up and you can touch it and I believe that's when it goes into a water circulation. It's still quiet. It's, it's really hard to tell. Um, I'm not really seeing water coming back up. It's kind of interesting. You can see a lot, of, a lot of water vapor coming out right in, your, right in my face. Um, so this is at temp, and I would naturally think that this is the moment when I should see some leaks, and I'm not seeing any water pooling up in here. It appears to be very dry. So I'm going to go ahead and let this guy run for a little bit 
I'm going to check the temperature. It's set at 155. It's currently sitting at um, 158 degrees. It teeters up and down a little bit. Probably me opening the lid as well. That's another reason why it's got the tempered glass is because it helps hold in the heat. And uh, also that the hinge design allows the water to trickle back into the chamber as it condensates. However, as we can see, there is a design flaw. Uh, the touchscreen's working great. Everything on this guy looks like it's working perfectly fine. And um, so I'm just going to check the temperature, calibrate it, um, or cal calibrate, verify the temperature. And then uh, I'm going to get this guy back out in service. So everyone, there you go. That is the Roilin uh, heater. And it, it has has a different list of different materials here and again i have no idea what this is for this might be for heating up cast elements you know like when they go to wrap a cast um but it has like polyform there's different thicknesses of polyform um poly polyflex too you know so um that's basically what this guy does it heats up material so probably you can form it and i assume it's for making casts but there it is simple enough all I have to do is install the back cover and it's ready for service. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching this far. Um, it was a simple fix, but you know, it's a good thing we got in there and checked it out because there was some other major things that electrically that needed to be dealt with in order for this to be really safely returned to service. So guys, hope you enjoy this video. If you do, please like, and subscribe down below. It really helps the channel out. I do appreciate it. And, uh, if you guys know what this thing is, for sure, go ahead and write it down below because I'd love to find out. Thanks for watching, guys.